I can't promise that every person will get every gift they want on time. Only Santa Claus can keep that promise. This week on The Breakdown, we have Stephen Overly, and he has been covering the issue that everyone is talking about this holiday season, and that is what is going on with supply chains. Let's start with um, what we mean when we say there are supply chain issues. This suddenly seems like a catch-all for everything that's wrong with the economy. You know, one of the misconceptions is that when we talk about the supply chain, we're talking about one single thing, and that's not actually the case, right? The way that you produce and you distribute chicken tenders is different from the way that you produce and distribute vehicles. And yet both of those products are getting to be harder to come by because of supply chain issues. The impetus for a lot of the challenges we're seeing right now is the coronavirus pandemic. People have had money to spend during the pandemic. They've not spent that on concerts and restaurants and experiences, and instead they've bought a lot of things. And many of those things come from Asia, and they have to get here by sea and by land. And so that's basically created a lot of congestion. The other effect the pandemic has had is creating disruptions throughout the supply chains. Factories and ports in Asia have been shut down periodically because of COVID outbreaks. And sometimes those shutdowns have lasted weeks at a time. The cause of this sort of imbalance, is that related in, in any way to all of the money that was pumped into the economy by both the Trump administration and the Biden administration. If you talk to economists, they will sort of point to some of that stimulus funding that the government did provide, as well as the fact that people's spending habits just really did shift because our lifestyle shifted. And we've also seen the unemployment rate come down considerably. With more people going back to work, they also are able to spend those dollars, dollars that they've earned, on consumer goods. What has the administration done? And, and realistically, what, what can they do in the short term, uh, if anything? The administration's hands are really kind of tied as to what it can do, especially in the short term. Our supply chains are largely privately run with limited government oversight. Some of the steps that Biden has taken have had an impact, and some are a bit more questionable. 40% of the goods that come into the country on the West Coast come through two ports, Los Angeles and Long Beach. The Biden administration has worked with port operators to threaten fees against companies that let their cargo sit for too long at the ports. That has helped to move containers away from the ports and allow more ships to unload their products. To help relieve congestion, I brought together labor and management and asked them to step up and cooperate more, to move forward and operating those ports, not five days a week, 40 hours a week, but 24 hours a day, seven days a week. To operate really around the clock, you need not just the ports to be open, but you need trucking companies to be coming in to haul away containers. You need warehouse facilities to be open to take in that product as it arrives. You know, it's kind of this continuous cycle. And just because one piece of it is moving doesn't mean the others are. So that really has not worked out as the Biden administration has really expected or touted the bipartisan infrastructure package that passed. That would put billions of dollars into ports and into freight to kind of help modernize a lot of outdated infrastructure. That's not a near-term solution by any means. You know, that money will take years to be distributed. Everyone's looking to, to Congress and specifically to the administration for some kind of fix or some kind of cure-all. And that just really doesn't exist. You can't just turn the economy back on overnight. So it takes a little bit of time. I will say we are making progress. One um, argument I, I've seen is that these supply chain issues are a kind of symptom of globalization. The reality is our supply chains have, over the last few decades, become more globalized. There are products that simply do not get made in the United States any longer. Uh, over the past one or two decades, uh, to farm out uh, manufacturing of all these essential supplies, whether it be now semiconductors or could be healthcare supplies that we needed during the time of COVID, whatever the case may be, uh, we need to not depend upon China or other countries for our essential needs. Where do you see this issue headed? 
Are the holidays going to be ruined? Santa will be able to deliver whatever packages he can get through the port of LA. <laughs> You're seeing more confidence that the holidays will not be totally derailed. That being said, this issue does not go away from Christmas. The supply chain backlogs continue to be sort of elevated and even record level backlogs at ports trying to get product into the United States. And that will continue into next year. And so next year being an election year, we will, I think, continue to see this talked about as a political issue.